Hi, my name is Stephen Kirsting, and in this video I'm going to show how to correct dynamic range and white balance issues in both Lightroom and Photoshop. Here we have an image that was submitted by Arial and it's suffering from a compressed dynamic range. So all the dynamic range is in the middle, very little in the highlights, whites, and nothing in the blacks. And it has an overall color cast because white balance isn't correct. Now, there's no such thing as correct white balance. If you prefer the image to have a little uh, of a warm cast because it's a bright sun, or a little bit of a blue cast because it's in shade or shadow, that's uh, completely up to you. But we're going to set these more correct. Go into the Develop panel. And first I'll create a virtual copy to work on so we can compare easily. And we're going to start with a white balance dropper in Lightroom. Now, the light balance dropper, let me set that to larger, go 3 to 1. The white balance dropper in Lightroom doesn't really set white balance. It doesn't set black to black or white to white or anything else. All it does is set the RGB levels to be equal. So when I hover over something, we'll pick a more obvious area here. It's reading in percents, red 22.1, green 21.6, and blue 26.6, and it's reading the same up here under the histogram. Now, if you'd prefer to see a 0 to 255 levels for RGB, you can just turn on soft proofing, set our profile to sRGB, and now under the histogram, it'll show the RGB levels in 0 to 255, but the dropper itself will still be showing in percents. So we'll set this point here to our color and you can see it's not set black to black. It's not reading zeros. And black should be zero and white should be 255. It's showing 64, 63, 64. So what all it's done is set the RGB levels to be roughly equal and we've used the dropper you'll see that that particular spot is should be equal in percents if I could find the exact same spot it's somewhere right in there where the RGB levels in percents are pretty much the same turn off soft proofing and we can see that there is still a color cast to this image because it has not set black to black or white to white now I normally prefer to set white as that generally will create a color cast in shadows and if there's going to be a color cast that's where I prefer it to be in the darks rather than the whites but in this image Lightroom's not doing that great a job with it so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fix the dynamic range we're going to get some blacks expand the histogram a bit so we're going to bring up our whites now you can see right up here this highlight warning is going to show the colors that are clipping in this image as I bring it up the first color to start clipping is green then it shifts to yellow which means all the colors are clipping so we'll bring it back till we have just nothing clipping and if you want sometimes a little bit of clipping is fine and we can see where it's going to clip by holding down the alt key I'm going to set it right about there. Now you might notice that I have my right panel expanded because that gives me finer control. The range of control is the same, but the increments it goes smoother and in smaller steps when the right panel is expanded like this. We're going to set the blacks now. So we're going to bring the histogram over to the left and green started clipping first we'll bring that to where nothing is clipping and maybe we'll bring up the shadows just to fill in the midtones a little bit and there's still a bit of color cast we could try to correct that it looks like there's a bit too much yellow in it and maybe a little bit too much green. 
If you're going to be adjusting white balance by eye, I find it difficult. Monitor calibration is critical. Room lighting, screen brightness are both critical and having a good eye for color balance, which I have a pretty good eye, but I still find it problematic. Those are all critical. And this is about what I would do with this image quickly. We'll go back to the original. Color cast, compressed dynamic range, corrected in Lightroom. And then we'll take the original, we'll send it over into Photoshop, because I feel Photoshop does a better job, and it's less dependent on me, monitor calibration, and lighting, screen brightness. So we'll just send this over to Photoshop real quick. Edit the original. And in Photoshop, my preferred tool, which usually works best, not always, but usually, is the Levels Adjustment Layer. Now in here I have a black dropper, a mid-tone dropper, and a white dropper. And these droppers set black to black and white to white. So I'm going to zoom in for an area, select the black dropper, and set it to black. Now that is set black. Those are 0, 0, 0, that spot. Now it still has a color cast in the highlights, so I usually set black first, white second, because white's going to overwrite the black setting. I'm going to set the output a little lower, about 245, and then we're going to set the right side of the histogram just to where it's coming in. And we can again hold Alt to see what we're affecting, so somewhere about there. And then we're going to set the gamma or midpoint. And now we have a corrected white balance. Black is black. Maybe a little color cast due to setting white second, but whites are definitely white. It's not clipping on the output. And we've expanded the histogram. Now, it's not real obvious here, so we'll look at the histogram. Now you can see we're all the way over to the right side. We've got data going all the way over to the left side. The histogram itself has shifted for brighter exposure. We'll zoom out a bit. And this combing, or all these notches in the histogram, are due to working on an 8-bit JPEG, 8-bit color. So it's preferable to start with a 16-bit file before sending it over. Send it over, 16-bit color and then you won't have this combing issue. But we'll look at the histogram after corrections and before corrections. I'll go ahead and send this back over to Lightroom. I do not know why it's doing that. Normally it just sends it back to Lightroom. Go to the library and sync the folder so I can get it back in. Another lesson on how to manage your Lightroom catalogs, unintended. All right. So here we have all of the images. There's the image as it started. Press dynamic range, color cast, a little better, edited in Lightroom, and then edited in Photoshop. Once again, my name is Stephen Kirsting. I hope you find this useful, and I hope you have a great day.